Hello, I'm Sasha Handel, your host for today's episode of Alt Baking Bootcamp. I'm a fitness instructor and baker in Brooklyn, New York, and I'm so excited to share this recipe with you. We're going to be making my favorite cookie, Caramel Delights. These little puppies are vegan and gluten-free, so whatever your dietary needs are, they most likely can fall in line with them. We'll start by making the cookie base, which is very simple, by combining four ingredients right into your food processor and then letting her do all the work. Let's get started. I've got equal parts almond flour and coconut flour. The coconut flour is just a little bit more fine whereas the almond meal is a little bit grainy. So I like the combination of the two to really help hold the cookie together. I've got about eight soaked dates and soaking them just helps to break down the fibrous parts of it. It makes it really soft. I've got about a quarter cup of coconut oil. It doesn't need to be melted when putting it in here, but you definitely want it soft to the touch. So if it happened to have solidified because it's cold or you keep it in the refrigerator, either take it out or just melt it over the stove top really quick. And then lastly, some toasted coconut. I toasted these coconut shreds myself, 350 in the oven for about five minutes. I did a nice thin layer on a sheet tray and I waited until I could really smell them. And we'll give it a whirl. My favorite thing to say. I'm pretty sure I said it 17 times in the last episode. All right, we're gonna go on high for 30 seconds. So the fat from the coconut oil and the pasty stickiness from the dates is what's going to act as a binder for this cookie. Right now it's resembling a bit of a wet sand texture. And so all that means is that I might need a little bit more coconut oil. I'm just gonna put a dollop there. We'll give her, you guessed it, a whirl. <laughs> just gonna get a good bunch here. We've got this little sand castle of wet cookie dough, but what happens when you press it together is this very magical thing. It stays together. Yay. So let's come back to my bowl scraper and I'm just going to shape the dough as I need it in order to make my cookie shapes. As I was mentioning, these are layered cookies. So we've got three layers. The thicker it is, the easier it will be to dip and the less likely it will be to break while you're dipping. And now, let's dig in. I wouldn't wiggle, I would just really, really get into there and then once you lift it up, it should come with your biscuit cutter and then I'll just move it right on over to my sheet tray. Gently apply pressure to all edges so that it can come out as one whole and let's just repeat. I'll put it in the freezer once I'm done and let it congeal for about 15 minutes. And congeal is just a fancy word for letting your fat solidify. Put that in your kitchen vocabulary. Now that you've let your cookies set in the freezer for at least 15 minutes, you can begin to melt your chocolate for dipping. We created a double boiler, which is just a pot with boiling water and then a metal pot on top so that the heat doesn't go directly to the chocolate itself. Make sure you have an oven mitt nearby. I've just got some dark chocolate pieces here and I'm going to put them in. I've started off with a relatively high flame, but I'm gonna bring that lower once actually my bowl is hot to the touch. You'll want to make sure that your cookies are super firm and super cold. We're gonna take one, we're gonna put it directly into the chocolate and without fiddling with it too much, I'm just gonna take my spatula and start to cover the top of it. So we're not moving the cookie, we're moving the chocolate rather. And then once it's fully covered with your chocolate, put your spatula off to the side, grab your fork, get in there and this part, is the fun part. 
I find that tapping the hand that's holding the fork will help get rid of that excess chocolate that's on the bottom. Bring it over, slide right off, and you're done. Grab the next cookie, and then we'll repeat. To keep the chocolate from re-solidifying, I'm just gonna keep a consistent low flame on the double boiler. Last one. Ta-da! You are now a professional chocolate dipper. <laughs> So these are gonna go um, right into the freezer. We're gonna let the melted chocolate set. 15 minutes is the minimum, and no longer than 30 is really necessary. Very, very simple. I've got some pre-soaked dates so that they're nice and mushy, caramel-like already. And we're just gonna add that, some peanut butter, a little bit of almond milk, and then finally some coconut shreds. We're just gonna start by adding about a tablespoon to begin with. If it's not the creaminess that we want, then we'll add a little bit more, but if it seems to suffice with what we've already added, then we're good to go. On high, 30 seconds, go. It's not quite the texture that I'm looking for yet, so I'm gonna add a little bit more milk and I'm gonna add those coconut shreds. Now we can transfer it back to our metal bowl Add in our remaining coconut shreds, and that's it. Okay guys, so we've got our chocolate dip cookies that have been sitting in the freezer for about 15 minutes, and we've got our peanut butter date caramel. And now the next step is just to layer the two. From previous episodes, making another celebrity cameo is the mini cookie scooper. We're gonna do about 3 fourths of the way full, layer it on top right in the center, and in the interim, I'm also reheating my chocolate so that as soon as we're done layering the next layer of toasted coconut, we can go ahead and continue on with our chocolate drizzle. And you can see here that it allows me to press down on my caramel layer, and I think they're beautiful. I'm feeling like these are looking pretty darn good. So we'll put these back into the freezer. Again, 15 to 30 minutes is a great range. You're just solidifying all of the liquid components. Let's go put them in. Let's give them a try. We've got some chocolate shards here. This is my favorite part of the whole episode. Mmm! Mmm, look at that! You see? Oh my gosh. I love toasted coconut. I hope you do too, because these are full of it. They're so good. The texture is really distinct. Each layer, you can tell that you're biting through three different things. And honestly, the peanut butter with the dates tastes like caramel. If you need, the detail of this recipe, which I think you will, it's in the description below. And in the meantime, you can subscribe to Well and Good. Thanks for watching. Let's eat cookies together. See you later. <laughs>